okay uh welcome to this class uh, in today's class we want to look at autographic projections and then um, we want to briefly see how we can also implement these projections using autocad now we have a typical object that is shown on your screen now this object has several faces just a simple block uh, you can see D points in the top direction. You can see B pointing in this face, A and E from the bottom, C from this odd direction. So in autographic projection, what we want to do is um, you need to consider uh, what is referred to as a, a plane, you know, several planes or quadrants. So if you remember your um, also lead on cut your acts in um, Sokatwa, okay? So you have first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and the fourth quadrant. So when we do autographic projections, we either will place our objects, this object that you have, uh, and you want to pr um, produce all the views. So in autographic projection, what we want to do is we want to produce these views, and don't forget autographic projection auto means uh, to be at 90 orthogonal okay at 90 so you want to project these views to those planes and then see what it will look like in uh, in your uh, the first angle third angles now so if I put it in the first quadrant I will refer to it as first angle if I put it in the third quadrant I will say it's a third angle okay so in the first quadrant I will put the object assume just assume it's at the middle of the box you don't have to do this anytime you draw it's just for um, description sake and now when the object is placed here not and you can project all the edges okay these edges can be projected to this the faces of this box see on this face on this plane and on this plane so this is the you know uh this plane this plane this plane so if you look at this face in this direction so let's assume you're looking at this direction this a direction okay and then we project all these edges you can see these lines you have this face so you can trace this face uh out of this box okay you will not see this plane but you will see this face you will see this face i'm sure you got it so that's how when you look at it, this plane you can see looking just straight so imagine that you've closed uh all of this areas and you can only see your eyes can only see this plane and this plane if you're looking in this direction if you look in this direction direction of b you notice that you can see only this face and this face you will not be able to see this other you know uh face line you know um horizontally if you look at this plane and you project it on this uh box you see that it you to trace this um shape but of course all these bent lines will look straight if you could actually use a camera to look in this direction so these bent lines will look um, straight okay so the same thing if you look at it from the top view you will notice that it will also just project this face this face and this face so all these other faces will not be seen and that's why you see it looking uh, it will only trace this shape okay but of course all other bent lines will look straight so that's why you can see this plane that is this area this area that is this portion and then this portion that is what you can see here now let's look at um what it will look like so when you have projected these views on this box so what you do is that you open up this box okay you this box that is below you you expand it let it go down the box that is this direction you also open it up and so you will see you have this you have this and you have uh this down here so this is what you look this is what has been done here so you see when the box was opened up it was opened up you know uh to the top plane to the bottom and then of course to this face and so you see this in this direction this in this direction and then you have this uh, horizontal plane it can also be opened upwards depending on how uh, you have um, positioned you know your drawing okay so you can see what has been done so this can be open in this direction in this direction and in this direction and then that would actually be a good way to you can also project this what you project to this face you can also project it to this face and that will also be interesting so by the time you opened it up you can see the views are showing you here and then you also have your projection symbol i'm going to explain this this first angle but you i will explain this very shortly now the same thing you do if it's in third angle what you have done is you have placed the same box in this third quadrant okay you've made the projections on the planes and you have opened it up also now let's look at another example now look at this example sometimes you can also have things that look curved have curvy areas uh, it's the same principle simply look at the left the top the side the front 
you look at it in this direction you see you will not be able to see all this bond axis you only see the straight points uh these lines will look curved but if you look at this curved line in this direction to be a straight line something like this so you can see this is uh, your object and this is what it looks like in your front view so if i look at the front which will be specified in any drawing the front view and the projection will always be specified this first angle is a third angle it will be specified so if you look at the front view look at the top view you can see if you look at it from the top look at the left side look at the right side so if you look at the left side that's why i'm telling you this curved face will look like a straight line if you if you turn in this direction it will look like a straight line you can see the bottom so if you look at it from the bottom now you can notice some hidden lines okay because if you project it from the bottom this line if you're looking at it from under you will not be able to see it so it will be hidden okay but if you're looking from the top you can see this line is visible so you can see it's visible of course you are seeing some smaller hidden details that is actually representing the circle that has you know in between this um, object and then you can see it is represented as a hidden line if you look at it in this right side you will also notice that this is the right side uh, there is a hidden line between between this section between is hidden and if you look at it from the left side also uh, comes out um, interesting if you look at it from the front you can see uh, it looks you can, you can see all this um, faces clearly if you look at it from the rear that's from behind you can see that these faces will be hidden okay that's actually why these lines are showing as hidden details that is this portion you're seeing now let's look at another example so if you look at example what i've explained you place an object in the first quadrant so the object is projected to all the planes if it's in the third angle projection you place it in this third quadrant you can see the third quadrant and then you project it to the planes and you can open it up so this day uh, then your 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 views will be, will be specified your front your left those arrows will be there to indicate to let you know so that there's uniformity okay because anybody can choose to make this his front someone can say okay this is my front so the lecturer always try to avoid confusion and tell you this is the front view that you should use for this problem so if you look at this it has also been done similarly you place it in the quadrant and then you can open it up horizontal the right plane and the frontal plane and then you can actually have your projections uh, as a way now this is another example uh, you can also see that this object has been placed in this quadrant we are not told whether it's first or third angle but what is important for us is that you can project all of these faces so if you project this face you can see to the horizontal if you project this face to this plane you can project the, this top face to this plane and then you can have what you call your front your plan and then your end your front either this or this or your end elevations it will be specified you can be told you this will be your front you can tell you this is your front whichever way is specified just follow the specification what is important for you is to note all these edges okay as you make your projections to the plane in autocad it's easy to do and i will show you very demonstrate that in a uh, very very quickly so now in summary what we've tried to do is that uh, I imagine in first angle projection that the object is in the first quadrant and that the object lies between the observer and the plane of projection so if you draw the views this is what it will look like the symbol for first angle this is just like a cone that is cut so that's the way it is represented if you cut this cone you know you're going to see a hollow area here so just always ensure that your projection is specified on your drawings because if your projection is not specified it will be confusing okay and then whoever is trying to interpret it will not understand what exactly uh, you are trying to do so this is the first angle and this is the third angle um, symbols okay and the same thing has been uh, repeated here so now let's go to autocad and see uh, very quickly what how we can uh, make do and produce our autographic projection so um, run sketches you should have done rough sketches now before you paste your drawing on your screen now sometimes let me just give you some tricks you must make sure that you turn on your auto mode okay so that you can restrict your cursor movements uh you should want to ensure that you're entering distances appropriately there are several ways to enter distances in autocad you can use direct distance entry you can use you know relative coordinates and all of those things but the exact entry is easier this is what you do if i click a line and i want to draw a let's say a box that is 100 by 50 by 100 now if i pick a line Make sure your auto is on so that you can pick up your old snap is on 
and then you can also pick a line from this point for example you move it in the direction you want to draw you see this is 100 box now you have to hit the enter key twice notice that it's beyond the screen but don't worry just zoom in a pan sometimes when you try to pan like i'm trying to do you see it's not going beyond this so all you need to do is type on zoom type on e to go extend and then you can zoom in and zoom out as you want okay so now you will need to just reduce this a bit pan it you can move this ucs away so that it doesn't uh, obstruct what you're doing okay and then you can click the line pick this point go in the direction you type 50 don't escape just continue in this direction type 100 and then you can close it up with 50. So that's the direct distance entry method of um, in AutoCAD. It's straightforward, okay? So what you do is draw a line, uh, just like your dividing lines. Remember how you do it on your drawing board, okay? You draw these lines to cross. And these lines are going to be like you're dividing your, your, you know, your quadrant. So this is going to be your, you know, in first angle, it's going to be first, your front, your plan, and your end is going to be your front your plan and your end okay so if i say i want to draw then of course you need to offset offset this uh, offset these lines by a distance so you can specify it on say five just uh, just make it reasonable so you can say five in this direction five in this direction uh five here five here you remember okay so i'm it makes it easy for you now when you've done this you want to place your drawings on this um lines that you've drawn so if, for example i have drawn maybe i have an object that i'm drawing uh this is the object for example and i also have a circle within this object So what I'm going to do is that uh, to make life easy for me so that, you know, because I'm going to draw in this direction, I'm going to use my uh, other tool. I showed you, I asked you to practice this. You can use your construction line. Now with the construction line, it's an infinite line. What the construction line will do for you is that it will create, you know, these um, beautiful um, extensions. Okay. At the end of your sketches, you can either delete it or you can only, you can just, um, highlight the areas that you want to work with so you put your construction line is still active click on enter enter okay you still want the circles because you want to show that uh, you also have projections for the circles now but you will observe that the construction line as you're adding it to the uh, object or to the drawing it makes it look cumbersome Okay, so to make that easy, you can simply just change the um, the colors for your construction line. So select all the construction lines and then right click, click on properties, and go to line color, you can change it to something else just so that it, it um, it appears different on your screen. And so you're not confusing construction line with your drawings proper so at the end of all these sketches i'm sure you'd have done um what you're doing uh, you produce the front elevation the side the plan so you continue in this order and then when you're done you can actually choose to delete the construction lines if i assume i'm done with all my sketches i've done everything i want to do i've done everything i said okay fine and i'm going to delete my construction lines because i've done everything that uh, i needed to do and then with my construction lines deleted, I can select the object, uh, go to click on, I'm going to click on the line type, on my line weights, and I'm going to increase the weight of this line to something thicker. Let's say something like this. I click on OK. And then make sure that the line width option is on back to your options so sometimes it'll be off so we need to go look for our line width make sure it's on and it's added to our screen and once the line width is added what i need to do is um, 
we're going to click it on okay so make sure it's on and go back to the lightweight settings and i'm going to change the i'm going to adjust uh, the default settings make it thicker click ok and you can see the line width but you know when this happens because you're using the same line for everything it's going to make everything thick so you're going to need to uh change all of the different uh, other lines you don't need okay so that there is a lot of distinction in your work you just need to keep um, adding other layers to your drawings uh, making your front elevation your plan and all of those things and then it will be easy to uh, if for example you want to now make maybe this a hidden uh, layer or something now uh, what you need to do is select on the object um, right click click on the line type click on orders click on load so I'll select this dash icon, for example, click on OK. Now select the line, particular line, because I've added this, see, I did it up, and then of course it doesn't look very nice. So I'm going to change the scale of this line. So I right click, click on quick proper properties, find the line scale, line type, line width, lines type, scale. Okay, so I'm going to reduce this to say 0.5. So you see the line as you do that it it changes this so you can change this to say 0 0.3 okay so escape and then you have your um, hidden details showing uh, right there on the screen so you need to just do the same uh, follow the same process it's very straightforward there's nothing really difficult uh, in this and then you can go on to create your other portions uh, create your elevations your plans it doesn't matter how the what the structure looks like it's the same process and that would be actually a good way to get your work going.